Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code. Today we are going to learn how we can use Flask, WebSockets and Ajax to create a real-time communication app that will send data asynchronously to all users. Okay, so I've created a folder in Visual Studio Code, code and called it Real-Time Chat. I've also opened it in my terminal. And the first thing we're going to do is just create a virtual environment. So we'll say Python 3-m EMV, and then we'll just call it my EMV. Sorry, Python 3. And then once that's done, we're just going to activate it. So we'll say source my EMV bin activate. And now that we've got it active, we're going to install Flask and Flask socket IO. We're going to let that do its thing, and then we'll come over to here. And in Visual Studio Code, we'll create a templates folder and a static folder. And then we are just gonna have an app.py. And then inside the templates, we will create a base.html. And this is just gonna have a HTML5 boilerplate. And then we can change the title to real-time chat. And we'll create a link to a style sheet. And this is just gonna be our static folder. So we'll say URL4 pass in static and then the file name and this is just going to be styles.css so now inside of our static folder if we create our styles.css then we come back to here and we'll just create a container and then inside of this we're going to have block content and then end block and this means that we will be able to use this the HTML template inside the rest of our templates. And then at the bottom of this, we're just gonna link to three different scripts. So here we'll say jQuery. This is gonna be 3.6.0. And we'll get the minified version. And then we're gonna link to our own um, JavaScript file. And this needs to go below the jQuery so that the jQuery will load first. So we'll say URL4 and then static. And here we'll just say file name is equal to app.js. And then if we come over to static and just create an app.js. And then we're going to link to Cloudflare. And this is going to be for the socket IO, but the JavaScript version. So we'll say HTTPS CDN JS dot cloudflare dot com forward slash Ajax forward slash libs forward slash socket dot IO. And then we'll get 4.0.1 and then socket dot IO dot JS. So now that is our index or our base dot HTML sources. We now can create a register.html and a login.html and then we will also need a chat.html now in all of these we will just say extends base.html and then we will put block content and then end block And I'm just going to copy and paste this into the register and the login pages. And I'll make the font a little bit bigger just so that you can see. Okay, so now we will actually get started with our app. So, well, we'll make sure that everything is installed correctly. And we don't have any warnings, which is good. So if we come back over to here and we go to our app.py, we say from Flask, import Flask. Render template, request, redirect, URL4, flash, and session. And then we'll say from Flask socket IO, we're going to import socket IO, send, and emit. And then we're also going to import OS so that we can actually handle a file inside of this. And we're just going to instantiate the Flask. So we'll say flask and then pass in name. And we're just going to config 
the Flask app, and this is going to have a secret key just so that we can actually ensure that Socket IO is working correctly. And this is just going to be whatever we want because it's a test environment. Obviously, if you're putting this into production, that should be something that is more secure. Um, and then we will say socket IO is equal to socket IO and we'll pass in the app. So now to get this or to make sure that this is running correctly, if we create a root, so we'll say app.root, pass in a forward slash and we'll just create an index function that returns render template and we will just say chat.html and then inside chat.html if we output heading one and then at the bottom here we'll say if name is equal to main and then at the bottom socket.io.run app and debug will be set to true. So we'll be passing in the app that we're actually creating to socket IO. So now if we just make sure that everything is working correctly. So if I come back to here and then say Python three app.py. So we have this working and we have hello world outputting. So we know that it's all working correctly. If I come back over to Visual Studio code and then if we create a document ready and we'll say function and then inside of this we will just console log hello and we will make the heading one red and then if we come back to here make sure it's all running correctly and we refresh we now have a red hello world if we inspect and go to the console, we have hello being output. So everything is working correctly. So now if we start with our roots, we can head back to our app.py and we can get started on the actual building. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just create a constant. And this is just gonna be a user's file and this is gonna hold, this is gonna be a, a text file that will hold all of the information about the users so that you can log in and register and log out. Um, so if we create a function to load the users, we're going to try to open the users file as a uh, read. And then inside of this, we are going to say users is equal to file dot read lines. And then if it's successful, we're just going to return a list that is a dictionary inside. We'll say int user dot split on the comma and then pass in the first index. And then we'll say username and this is going to be user dot split on the comma again and it's going to be the first index. And then we'll say dot strip just to get rid of any white space. And then we'll say password and this is going to be set to user.split again on the comma, but this time the second index and then dot strip. And then outside of this dictionary, we will say for user in users. So we are looping through all of the users in this file and we are gonna create a list that has the ID, the username and the password for every single user inside of this users. So now we have the try, we need to handle the file not found. So we'll say accept file not found error. And we are just going to return an empty list. So now we need a way to save the user. So we'll say def save user and we need the user ID, the username and the password. And then here we're just gonna open the file. So with open users file, and then we'll say as a, and we are now gonna say file.write, and then we will say user ID, and then without any white space, then we will say username, and then 
password. And then at the end, we're just gonna add a new line just to make sure that it's always saved onto a fresh line. So now we have our save users sorted, we can actually start to get to work on our routes. So we have our index file or our index route already created, but we actually wanna to add to it. So this is gonna be two different ways. So you render the chat if you're logged in, if you're not logged in, then it will render the login page. So we'll say if username in session, so if the username is already stored in the session, then we are gonna return render template of chat.html. And then we will say username is equal to session. And then we will get the username. Otherwise we are going to just return URL four. And here we're gonna pass in login. So this is just gonna return, if you're not logged in, it will return the URL for login, which will be the login function. So now we can get started on the actual register. So we'll say app.root and pass in register. And then this is gonna need a post and a get method. So get and post. We'll say def register. Then we'll say if request.method is equal to post. So if it's a post method, we are going to get the username, which will be request.form and then username. We'll say password is equal to request.form for password. And then we'll say users is equal to load users. And now we wanna to check to see if any user that's already stored in the file has the same name as this username, because if they do, then we don't want them to be able to create a user with that username. So we'll say if any, and then we'll say user with the index of username is double equal to the username that's passed in. And then we're gonna, just gonna say for user in users. So this is an e, a, a quicker way to loop through each one and do a conditional on each loop. And we'll say flash. So this is gonna output a message. So username already exists. Please choose another. And we're gonna return redirect URL four, and then back to the register page. And then if that hasn't happened, so if the user isn't in the username, then we're gonna say um, user ID is equal to the length of users, and then we'll add one to it. And we're gonna save the user by passing in the user ID, the username and the password. Next, we will output another message saying flash or using flash and we'll say account created successfully, please log in. And then we're gonna return a redirect for the login page so that once you've created your account, you can then log in with that account. And then we're just gonna return render template for register.html for if it is the get method. So if it's not this post method, then we are just gonna have the register.html load. So now we have our register, we should probably sort the login route because we need a way to log in. So we'll say app.root forward slash login. And this is also gonna need two methods of get and post. And then we'll say def login then we'll say if request.method is double equal to post, then we are just going to take these three lines because it's exactly the same. So we will get the username from the request, the password from the request, and then we'll load all of the users. And we're going to say user is equal to next. So this function will just get the next and we'll say user for user in users if the user's username is double equal to username and user password is double equal to password. 
And then outside of this, we are just going to pass in none. And this is essentially going to loop through all of the users that we've got here. And it's going to check to see if the user that we are looping through has the username that's equal to this user or the password that's equal to this password, because they're the ones that have just been entered. And these are the ones that are stored in the database. So if it is, then we will save that to the user variable. And then we'll say if user. So if it's true, then we'll say session username, and that will be set to the username. And then we will just return redirect URL for index. And then we will say flash invalid username or password. So if we've got through this section and the there isn't a user inside of or stored in the database that it matches what's been passed in from the user, then we are going to output a, a flash message saying invalid username or password. And then if it's a get method, then we are just going to return render template for login.html. And now we need a way to log out. Now this doesn't need any methods, but we will say def logout and then session dot pop username and then none. And this is just going to remove the username from the sessions. And we want to return redirect URL for the login page. And now finally, we want to create a function for the socket IO that is just going to handle the user's message and actually broadcast it or put it out using Socket. Now, Socket is basically a communication protocol that provides communication over single TCP connection, which essentially means that you're allowing for real-time communication by sending data both ways, which is unlike traditional HTTP requests. So what we'll say here is app, well, socket.io, and we'll pass in message. And then we're just going to handle the message. And this is going to take one parameter for message. And then we'll say username is equal to session.get username. And then if username, we're going to print the username followed by the message that they've put out. And then we're going to use the send function. And this is just going to say MSG, which will be similar to the message. And then username, which will be the user's username. And then we are going to say broadcast is equal to true. So now we have all of our routes up and running. If we come back over to our register, we can start creating the actual layout. So if we put in a heading one that just says register, and then in, in here, we're gonna loop through the messages. So we'll say with messages is equal to get flashed messages. So this is, these are the flash functions that we have been using. And then we'll say if messages, and we're just going to create a div that has the class of flash and we're going to get the messages and we'll output the very first one and then we'll say end if and then end with and now if there isn't any messages we're going to create a form that is a post request and the action will be url4 and we're just going to say register and then inside the form, we're going to have an input of text, which has the name of username. And then we can remove the ID. We'll put a placeholder that says username, and then we'll also add required. And then we're going to create an input for password, which has the name of password, placeholder of password, and then also is required. And then we'll create a button with type submit. 
and it's just going to say register. And then at the bottom, we are going to have a paragraph tag that says already have an account. And then inside of this, we will create an A tag and we'll say login here. And then this is just going to have URL for the login page. So that is actually the register function sorted or the register HTML sorted. So if we come now to our login, we are essentially going to have exactly the same layout. So if we just copy this and then paste into the login page, we'll change this to say login. And then the URL for here is going to be for the login function. So this one will change to register and then we can change this to login as well. So the username and the passwords will still match exactly what we've got set up here. So we've got login function with that and then we've got the register function with that and they both take username and password as the IDs or the names of each uh, input field. So that is the uh, login.html, although we should probably change this to say register. So that when you're on the login page, if you haven't got an account, you can register. So we'll change this to say, don't have an account, register here. And then now we need to sort out the actual chat. So if we come over to our chat and we can remove this hello world that we put in earlier, and we'll create a heading one that just says chat room. And then we'll create a, a div with a class of chat container. And then a div with a chat box class. And it's also going to have an ID of chat box. And then it needs to have an input of text. And this is going to have an ID. An ID of message. And then the placeholder, which will say enter your message and then required. And we'll create a button with the ID of send button and it will just say send. And then we will have a P tag that just has some information about you as a user. So we'll say logged in as username. And then we will create an A tag. And this a tag is going to be a URL for logout. And then here we'll just say logout. So now that is the chat sorted. Um, if you wanted to, you could put an if statement in saying if you're not logged in, then it would show something different to this, but we have also handled that within the actual index, because if you're logged in, then it will render the chat. If you're not, then it will render the login. Um, but just to bulletproof it, you could add more. Um, so now if we actually link up our Ajax, or link up our HTML and our Python using Ajax. So here, if we remove our console log, we'll create a socket. And this is just going to be IO and we'll say socket dot on and then message and then we'll pass in the data and then here we'll say let username is equal to data dot username let message equal to data dot message so this is this socket dot uh, socket dot IO that we created down here so this is what's being sent and then here we are just going to grab the chat box and we'll say append and then we will pass in div and then strong tag which will have the username so I need to make these back ticks rather than quote marks and then we will close the strong tag and then we will just have the message and then after this we will close the div. So this is going to append this out, which will have the username and then the message that you have typed in. 
Now we will handle the send buttons click. So we'll say send button dot on click. And then we will create a function. And here's just going to have the message. So we'll get the message. And then we'll get the vowel from it. And we'll say socket dot send message. And then we will reset the message so that it is an empty string. And then we're going to get the message, but we will handle the click depending on if they've entered the um, enter button. So inside strings, we will say message dot key press and then pass in a function which will have the event. So we use E for event and we'll say if E dot which is double equal to 13, which is the enter key, then we are going to say send button dot click. And this is just going to essentially force the send button to be clicked. So it will shoot this once you have pressed enter. And then we're just going to return false. And now we can actually start adding some styling. But if we check to make sure that things are working, we have an error here. So indentation error on line 17 in the app.py. Line 17. I run it again just to see. We now have socket is not defined. That's line sixty two. Ah, so it's actually socket IO dot on. And now if we come back to here and try it again, we have our development server up and running. So if we refresh, we now have template not found forward slash login, URL for login. Okay, so if we come to just the base route, it says template not found for forward slash login. But then if we go to forward slash login, we have one. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but if we come to register, we can create a account. So we'll say test and then just create a password. URL for register. So in the register function, we need to put this into ginger syntaxing. And now if I come back to here and then press register, if I create it again and press register, we now have an account created successfully. And then if we come over to our Visual Studio code, we have a users.txt, which has the user ID, the username, and the user password. So now if I try to log in and I say, you are for login, uh, it'll be the same. So we need ginger sy syntaxing on this as well. And then if I try to log in again, need to refresh the page. So test. And now we have our chat room. So now if I create a, a chat, so I say hello and press send, we now have this being output here. And if I were to open this in another window, I could have a real time chat. So if I close that, um, we now need to add a little bit of styling to this just to make it a little bit nicer. Um, so if I come over to styles.css, we will say for everything, box sizing, border box, 
and then body we'll say font family Arial and sans serif background of 1f 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 color of white margin naught padding naught and then we are going to get the container and we'll say max width of 600 pixels we'll say margin of 50 pixels and then auto on the right and left and then 20 pixels all around we'll give it a gray color of 333 three, three, and then a border radius of 8 pixels and a box shadow of 0 2 pixels 5 pixels and then we will pass in black with a 0.1 opacity and then we'll say container a so every a tag inside of a container will just be a rgb color of 2152151179 and now we can target the heading ones so text the line center and then margin bottom of 20 pixels now we will get the input types for text and the input for password just so that they're both styled the same we'll say width 100% padding of 10 pixels margin of 10 pixels top and bottom and then naught left and right and then a one pixel gray border with a border radius of four pixels just so it's got a slight curve and then a background of a lighter gray or a darker gray sorry and then the color will be white so the text will always be white what's passed in next we will target all of the buttons so they will all be the same styling and then we'll say padding of 10 pixels background of 4CAF50 so that will be a little green and then we'll say color white border none border radius of four pixels cursor pointer so that when you hover over it there is the pointer and then a font size of 16 pixels and then when you hover over the button we want to change the color so that'll be 45A049 and now we can actually start styling the container we'll say display flex flex direction column and then height we'll just give it 500 pixels and then we'll say chat box flex grow one so that it grows automatically and then we'll say overflow y auto so that when you've written too much it will start with a scroll and then one pixel solid gray for the border again border radius of four pixels padding of 10 pixels margin bottom of 10 pixels and then a background of 444 four, four. and now we will have the chat box div so that's the chat box div that is created by JavaScript. We will just give a margin bottom of 10 pixels just to make things a little bit clearer. And then we will change the username. So that's the strong. And this will be a green. So 4CA. And then we'll have the message and that will be flex grow of zero margin bottom 10 pixels padding 10 pixels border one pixel solid gray four pixel border radius background of 444 and then color white just so things stand out 
and then we will have the send button flex grow zero padding of 10 pixels i'm just going to move this down a little bit background of 4ca color white border none and then border radius of four pixels cursor pointer and then font size 16 pixels and then we will say send button on hover we'll just change the background to be the darker green so four five darker green sorry so four five a um, and then just styling the flash message so we'll say dot flash and then color red text align center and then margin bottom of 20 pixels so now if we come back over to chrome and refresh we have our chat room created but now if i create in a new window so if i create an incognito window and then bring that over to here and i'll make it half the width if i can and then this one i will make half the width as well and now on here if i go to register and then I create a new user. So account created successfully. And then I say Chris. So we now have two chat rooms, both being used in different windows. One logged in as Chris, one logged in as test. And then if I send a message from here, we now have it output in both. And if I then send a message from here, We have a real-time communication app that is sending data from two different windows. So this is essentially a way of being able to create an instant direct messaging service. Hopefully this has helped you grasp how we can use WebSockets, Flask and Ajax to create a real-time communication app that sends messages instantly. If you learned something today, please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to see new videos coming. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.